this is a profession that I, uh, it was a very mindful entry into the diplomatic profession. Yeah. I wanted to do this. Yeah. I, by, by God's grace, I, I, I am doing it. My primary role is to represent my country and its interest in Kenya. And the biggest chunk of that is really how do we progress on the partnership between India and Kenya. When it comes to global issues, yeah. Kenya and India have a lot of uh, similarities in perspective yeah. uh, and uh, in also the challenges we face. How do you spend your free time? Because I don't have as much free time as, as I would like cracks, yeah. Um, I try to spend it as much as I can with my children uh, and my family. What is the beauty of sharing a life with a spouse who understands the nature of your work, especially when they're in the same profession as you? Our guest today is fortunate to have just that support, yet she admits that marriage is always a work in progress and cherishes the moment she gets to spend with her family whenever she has time. Hello and welcome to Globe Traction. My name is Pasil Teleo. Today we are joined by Her Excellency Namgia Kampa, the Indian High Commissioner to Kenya. We'll be discussing her role, her diplomatic career, the historical ties between Kenya and India, and various collaborations in the health and education sectors. We'll also touch on the initiatives her office is driving with support from her home country. I hope you enjoy this story. Many thanks for making the time. Hi Commissioner, Mr. Mrs. Namgya. Did I pronounce that correct? Perfect. Namgya. Namgya, Namgya Kampa, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'd like you to tell me, before we get into you know our discussion, I would like you to tell me what is your role as the Indian High Commissioner to Kenya? Right. So first of all, welcome to India House and Thank I'm you. also glad to have this opportunity to have this conversation. So as India's representative in Kenya, uh, my primary role is to represent my country and its interest in Kenya. And the biggest chunk of that is really how do we progress on the partnership between India and Kenya yeah. and the bilateral relationship that is uh, deeply valued. And that's the reason why we're here and uh, why we're here in the strength that we are and what can we do to progress that. That's my charter, in a sense, uh, in succinctly when I'm sent to Kenya. So far, since uh, 2022, since you came, mm. how do you find it so far? You know, um, I will be honest, yeah. I wasn't sure what I was getting into. This is my first time in Africa. Are you serious? Uh, on an assignment, yes, yes I am, I am, uh, and I am deeply apologetic for not having gotten around <laughs> to this beautiful continent no, before you don't, this. You don't have to so this is my first time um, uh, on an assignment, a professional assignment in Africa. So I must say that um, as, any, as with anything that's the first time, uh, you don't really know what you're fully getting into. And it has been such a wonderful, wonderful in a sense, I guess, surprise, because when things turn out in a way that's beautiful and when you don't actually know it fully, the, how yeah. it's going to evolve, yeah. it always takes you a bit aback in a wonderful way. Yeah. So it has been. And part of that is just that you have, you live in an amazing country. Uh, you have a, a blessed uh, you know, sort of country that you live in. Yeah, and I don't do. know if Kenyans themselves appreciate it as we much do. as we do, we do. Uh, from outside, yeah. because you always sort of can contrast. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have a, we had developed this, uh, this tourism slogan in India for one of our states called God's Own Country. But God's I think that really country. applies to Kenya also. So in addition to Kerala, which it was, uh, they call themselves God's Own Country. Yes. I think Kenya is God's Own Country as well. And it's been wonderful. So it's been a wonderful welcome. And also the vibrant Indian diaspora in Kenya just uh, makes it so much easier to why just you, settle down. Why are you expecting down. such a big diaspora in Well, Kenya? I knew the numbers, but you know, numbers never tell the full story. And diasporas are very diverse, as India is. Yeah. So that diversity transfers into wherever they go. And uh, uh, it was, it's, it's a very welcoming diaspora as well. they are wonderful ambassadors for Kenya, but also real bridge builders with India because yeah. they have held on to those traditions, uh, Indian traditions, mm -hmm. the festivals, the, the, the culture, the languages. Yes. And uh, 
they're proud Kenyans, but they also inhabit all of those aspects of their mother. So the roots, you know, the roots that they come from. Yeah. And uh, they make you feel really welcome. You get everything Indian. I mean, in very prosaic terms, you get everything Indian here. You don't and have to, you know, You don't of, have to struggle. And even at true, the market. True. I know you don't go shopping anyway, but you can't miss, you know, whatever you used to eat in India, can you? Absolutely, you don't. Because you get everything. And in fact, I must say, yeah. some parts of Kenya I've been to, uh, I think they're, it's, it's so blended in that they don't even know if this is Indian or Kenyan, like That's samosa or chapati. Yeah. <laughs> I like you mentioned chapati. It used to be my favorite at some really? point. Yeah. And yeah. are you aware you're the 44th tribe in Kenya, by I the am, way? I am, I am, because the diaspora is very proud of that. Yeah. And uh, they like to sort of uh, bandy that around as something that is a milestone in terms of their own uh, journey uh, here. And I think it's a wonderful thing that we... Uh, how how do you feel Kenya. about that, especially when it comes to the relations between these two countries and the fact that they've been fully, you know, in acceptance of you? and you know just integrated within the kenyan yeah community. I, I, to me they're to me in many ways they're yeah. like a model diaspora because they are um you know they're very proud kenyans as i told you yeah. and they're really when you talk to them you can just sense that in the conversations with various uh, sections of the diaspora that i've had an opportunity to interact with um but also uh, very very uh, strong believers in uh, building bridges of friendship between India and Kenya. And as an ambassador here, yeah. they're a wonderful, uh, in a, a wonderful set of uh, people to therefore engage on ideas mm -hmm. on uh, who have a stake and who have an interest in addition to everybody else here in how we can develop this further and who understand both geographies uh, you know, a little better than, uh, than, than others. You, you've had a, such a diplomatic career, mm. very distinguished. Of course, I told you you look pretty young. And I, I would like to know along the way, how has it been for you? And the fact that you haven't been to Africa, this is your first official assignment. Yes. How was it prior to this and what were you up to? Uh, so my diplomatic journey, mm -hmm. this is a profession that I... Uh, it was a very mindful entry into the diplomatic profession. Yeah. I wanted to do this. Yeah. I, by, by God's grace, I, I, I am doing it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, um, uh, there are always days uh, at work where you have your day of frustration and like, why am I doing this? Yeah. You know, everybody has that wherever they are. But it has been just the most uh, exciting uh, sort of uh, profession to be in. Um, uh, generally, sometimes what you get is not necessarily all that it was cracked up to be. In this case, that's not the case for me, as far as my personal experience is concerned. Yeah. I, I think that uh, I love my job mm -hmm. and I love my job uh, at this time in this continent with the kind of promise we have uh, in terms of the continent and the country, Kenya but also in terms of what we can do together uh, between India and, and Kenya. Kenya. Uh, and it's a great time to be an Indian. And it's a great time to be an Indian in Kenya. So, uh, you know, I, I really don't have much to complain about. Uh, and my diplomatic journey has been very rich and I've served uh, before this in mostly in Asia, but also in uh, the United States. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, uh, you know, the whole idea of being able to uh, interpret uh, what is happening in India for the world yeah. and to interpret what is happening in the world for India and then to find those points of convergence and intersection which can help, uh, you know, sort of your national agenda but also help in the kind of global issues we face, yeah. also help find, as a diplomat, it's, as, a, as a profession, it's my job to find those areas of opportunity which help people on all sides. Uh, and in this case, in my current role, it means in India and in Kenya, because that's the most sustainable kind of partnership. And, and, and you can imagine something like that is rewarding, no. especially when you hit that, uh, you know, that, that, that opportunity and when you see it flower and when you see the sort of fruits of that thing. You uh, feel good. Come, yeah, you feel yeah, good. You, you feel, feel good. good. It's a good day at work. And I was about to ask you, how do you balance? Because you're one of the few, you know, female high commissioners you know, representing your country, not just your country, but representing a foreign country in mm. this country and uh, interacting <clears throat> with your counterparts and, uh, you know, 
setting agendas for your country and also for your host country. How has it been for you from, you know, the gender perspective? Um, well, the honest answer is yes. that we need more women in diplomacy. Uh, in India, and I, I don't want to be held to the statistic, but yes. I think, um, if I recall correctly, it's about 20%. So it's not where it should be. Do you, do you have a particular set or do you have a particular law or policy that you know, you're trying to work on to ensure that it goes beyond 20%? No, we don't have what if, uh, you know, we don't have a quota. We don't have yeah. like, it has to be this percentage. Oh, yeah. We don't have any bar. Mm -hmm. uh, the kind of uh, recruitment processes we employ are gender neutral. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but we don't have an affirmative policy as far as the diplomatic profession is concerned in terms of saying there has to be X proportion of women in the overall yeah. Yeah. It has been on the rise, um, but as you can imagine, a profession like this is also uh, unsettling um, in terms of the constant movement yeah. and the kind of balances you yeah. have to strike. Yeah. Uh, but then again, to, to my mind, uh, I think that's something that women have to juggle whatever the profession they're in, and men have to juggle. And the more we juggle equitably, the better that balance becomes. Uh, I come from a household where my husband's also working. And, and your here. husband is also a diplomat. He's also a diplomat. He's our, here. How yes. do you two of you survive? How do you manage? <laughs> uh, uh, the, the, the less serious answer to that is yes. sometimes uh, by, you know, within into what, 20 years of marriage, it's good to have a, a little of that healthy distance. Yes. But the more serious answer is that it is a, uh, it is a constant work in progress. Uh, there is no set formula where you can say, oh, this is what, this is the template and this yeah. is what we need to do. Yeah. It's something that each individual, each man or woman and a family have to arrive at together in terms of what works for them and every day make those choices. It's not a one-time choice to be made. Yeah. And again, fortunate to have a partner who supports you and you support them and then you find those uh, And also a partner areas who understands how your work is. Correct. So dynamics. being in the same profession yeah. Helps. Yeah. helps. Is he still in Bahrain? He is. He's our ambassador in Bahrain. He's yeah. just, uh, he's just, it's not been a year yet, so he still has some time. Oh, great. And uh, how do you work out the kids and all of that? The kids are with me right now. Yeah. Um, uh, and they're going to school here and they love it here. Uh, uh, I, I was telling you, or you are telling me, you may not just go back. <laughs> True. <laughs> you know, um, I came here and they said, if you stay in Kenya three years, yes. you just don't feel like going back to wherever you are from, wherever. So I said, probably that's the reason why Government of India has mostly a three-year assignment policy on these things. <laughs> and now that we're talking about the government of, of India, congrats, because, you know, your head of state just got re-elected. Yes. Yeah. Head of how, government. Yes. How does that make you feel? Well, elections is something that's, uh, that's, that's, that happens in India every five years. Yes. Um, but uh, I think I'm incredibly proud of the democratic process that we have uh, we have set for ourselves from the time of our independence. Yeah. And if you look at this, these elections, you had uh, 642 million people cast their ballot. Uh, we had, uh, I think, 1 million plus uh, booths, electoral booths across the country. Yeah. Uh, Were you there during the... No, I, I, I was here. I was okay. here. But yeah. this is what happens. Uh, over, a f over six weeks, I think about six weeks, seven phases of elections, because it's a massive... I mean, it's historically the most, the biggest elections ever to take place in any country. Uh, and we really pride ourselves on, on this, uh, dem what we call festival of democracy, that we're able to do this uh, in a peaceful manner. Yeah. With, uh, and, and I think that's something that, uh, uh, that, 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 um, uh, that, that as an Indian, uh, and as an Indian serving abroad, when I look at this happening back home in my country, and we have the verdict and the results from that, uh, it, it just makes me feel very proud. As I said, it's a great time to be an Indian and uh, to see, uh, you know, these kind of um, uh, developments, but also to see the continuity in terms of our, um, uh, of our democratic traditions. Kenya and India share quite a lot, mm. you know, in terms of history. And I'm trying to to understand from your perspective, what is it that historically you can be proud of as achieved between these two countries? So, uh, you know, I, I like to say this, that uh, when I looked at the history of India, Kenya, yeah. um, what, one, what jumps up at one is that it's really, a, it's really a history, frankly, led by the people. It's based on, it's anchored in these 
uh, people who you know crossed the Indian Ocean and came here for either trade and commerce yeah. or to build that railway, uh, which is which is the sort of foundation of the Indian diaspora here. They, there's and one particular family that was the first one to set foot in Kenya. Do you remember? Oh, is that so? From the Indian community. Uh, you know, I, I know there are many old families who yeah. go back five generations, yeah. six generations. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure who, which is the family which has this title of being the first one to set foot. Uh, but uh, I, I meet them, uh, you know, like I said, all yeah. the time in terms of my interactions here. And uh, so for me, the people of both countries really have been at the bedrock. And I don't know if you know this, but similarly, yeah. we have uh, people who've gone from the east coast of Africa, who've settled in India, who are today um, fully Indian, but haven't left their African traditions. So we had actually had a cultural troupe come here, um, and they were singing songs in Swahili yeah. and speaking fluent Hindi. And, uh, you know, and they're black. And they're black. Yeah. They're black. And they're in Gujarat. And uh, in some parts of Karnataka, in fact, I think I re read somewhere that one of them even became a member of parliament uh, of the local, I think it's of the Legislative Assembly a year, a few years ago. So uh, that's, that's, that's the foundation of our relationship. And uh, that meant that also Indians participated in the struggle against colonialism in this country, right? And also uh, in terms of the economic backbone of this country as it developed uh, as an in independent country. And uh, therefore, in a sense, uh, if you look at India, Kenya also, yeah. the trade and economic partnership has been a big pillar of what we have done with each other. Yes, I was about to ask yeah. about the trade cooperation. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. yes. And it has developed and evolved. Uh, so it has been a very um, uh, mindful, but also very organic evolution of a partnership that is based on really the kind of exchanges we had, the kind of similarities we had. You know, we are, we are both been, uh, under British colonial rule, um, and we both sort of uh, had, uh, you know, struggles against colonialism, uh, yeah. and uh, we've both uh, been uh, wedded to development. Um, uh, and as as new nation states, uh, we got our independence in 1947. You got it a couple of decades after that. Yeah. But uh, the journey and the aspirations have been very similar. So the trajectory, we, we've in got a sense, lots of similarities. Lots of similarities. Yeah, yeah. You're a country of young people. We're a country of young people. You are. Uh, our median age, uh, if I recall correctly, is about 28. They, there's, uh, you know, the, you know, pathways to a better life, and that starts with, you know, every child, every citizen having mm. good education. Mm. Between these two countries, are we having any collaboration on education? Yes. So, uh, uh, as you might know, Priscilla, that we have had, uh, India has been an educational destination for Kenyans. Uh, and in fact, to this day, I, one of the things that always strikes me is I meet many people in and outside government and they say we are an alumni of Chandigarh or yeah. Hyderabad, the places yeah. in India, yeah. um, and are able to still recall some of the local language. Uh, I think Kenyans have a flair for language because I've heard Kenyans speak to me in Punjabi and I'm like, I don't speak Punjabi, but yeah. <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. So yes, education has been uh, part of our um, uh, sort of exchanges from the very beginning. Uh, and as of now, yeah. uh, we certainly prioritize uh, that kind of intermingling. Uh, and as of now, we offer scholarships to uh, Kenyans. In fact, uh, we've just increased the number of scholarships we offered to Kenyans last you December. You know, that's what I wanted to yeah. hear, right? <laughs> yes. So, yeah. uh, and we really hope that uh, we will have more Kenyans. And we have what we call a study in India scheme. So there are government scholarships that we offer to Kenyans in any field you want. Once your, the university accepts you, uh, because the number of scholarships are at right now at 80. 80. Mm -hmm. So once the university accepts you, then um, is it, you know, is it you a try fully to, funded scholarship? It is absolutely a fully funded scholarship uh, from airfare to the tuition fees to stipend to book allowance. Uh, and uh, it is uh, completely taken care of. There is no expenditure, including the visa process. So there is no expenditure on the part of the student. That, that, that is good news. Is there any, any more? education exchange so in addition to up? the uh, scholarships that we offer we yeah. also have what is this is these are scholarships specific to Kenya but we also have a larger as I was telling you a study in India scheme yeah 
under that scheme, um, Kenyans, uh, young Kenyans can apply to study in India. And that also has a window where uh, financial assistance is offered. Uh, it's not automatic, but it's offered. Yeah. And I must tell you, and I know Kenyans already know this, that India is a fairly competitive educational destination. And it's very popular for uh, for uh, all kinds of courses, but particularly for a lot of STEM disciplines. Yeah. Uh, engineering, yeah. IT, medicine, business administration. Yeah. yeah. So. Great. Now, now that you spoke about STEM, I'd like to bring you back. I know you are not in the country yet, but there is also the bit of collaboration in healthcare. Mm. You know, the Kenya-India collaboration. Mm. And this particularly I'm talking about was during the COVID-19 yes. pandemic. Yes. And um, you may have picked up from, you know, uh, the previous commissioner on what it is that they did or what is, is, is it is that, you know, took place in terms of, you know, medical supplies and, you know, vaccines and yes. those kind of things. Would you... Paint a picture of that, please. Yeah, sure. So I, I think uh, during the pandemic, yeah. uh, we did uh, extend assistance to uh, friendly partner countries, including Kenya. And in the case of Kenya, we did provide vaccines yeah. uh, and medical uh, medical uh, items. Um, and uh, what we realized through the pandemic, I think globally so, is that uh, you can't uh, isolate yourself when the problem is of this scale and it requires yeah. us to work together. What yeah. we also realize is the vulnerability of supply chains as far as essential you know, drugs or essential items are considered to combat this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, pandemic. Um, and so uh, India's approach in that time and post that time, which yeah. we're right now yeah. here, is guided by that. And one was this immediate relief that you referred to where we got medicines and vaccines across. But two is also, and I want to um, sort of share that with you, is also the willingness to do more in terms of building partnerships. So whether that is talking about actually uh, taking vaccine uh, manufacturing uh, sort of capacities outside India, uh, or uh, looking at other kinds of healthcare partnerships. We also did a lot of capacity building around the COVID time, including a lot of it virtually to essentially um, see how we can uh, impart that kind of uh, experience and training from what we had done. Yeah. And because we recognize, uh, and I think countries across the board recognize that this requires us to work together. I'd like that we speak about Indian businesses in Kenya. What is it that you consider as the main challenge for them in terms of you know, just operating within the Kenyan economy? So I think our own businesses, um, there is, first of all, a growing interest to, to, to uh, work in Kenya. Yeah. Uh, and so you'll see a lot of uh, traffic uh, coming from India to explore business opportunities. Uh, many of those are in the process or already converted into actual investments or actual presence. Uh, and it helps that we're right across an ocean and connectivity is not too bad. Distances yeah. are not too bad. There's yeah. a familiarity in conditions. I think the challenges, if you ask me in terms of business uh, that always that seeks overseas uh, destinations and that explores, always are broadly similar, which is uh, in terms of the information. Yeah. Where are the opportunities? Where are the projects? Uh, how can we meet those information, uh, those those gaps in information? Uh, and the uh, second is in terms of, and I wouldn't say it's a challenge, but more in terms of a set of uh, a facilitation. So, uh, as the the more single window interface they have and facilitation they have for their business in in in, in Kenya for Indian businesses, I yeah. think it helps them make those decisions faster. I would certainly say predictability of the policy environment. Ms. High Commissioner, Kenya is a significant player within the, the region and I'd like to know how does India view Kenya's role you know, in terms of um, uh, integration and economic cooperation? Yes, we certainly recognize uh, Kenya's significant role in the region yeah. and uh, both as a government but also for the private sector and businesses we recognize Kenya's role as a gateway to the wider region and we recognize the immense potential stemming from that and that's precisely why we have so many Indian businesses that call Kenya home today and so many more interested you wouldn't believe the number of queries I get from India especially after yeah. the visit of President Ruto to New Delhi yeah. uh, and I must say he made quite a mark on the business community in an interaction I was there and in an interaction uh, and I think um, 
you will see an increase in that business traffic uh, precisely because not just of our excellent relationship, but because of the immense potential in Kenya's role as a gateway to this region, um, uh, supported by uh, you know, progressive policies of the government of Kenya and the emphasis on foreign investment. And I think that's, uh, that's exactly what businesses look at. Uh, they really look at uh, all of these aspects and Indian businesses are globalizing in a big way. And I know Kenya is on their mind when they look at Africa as a destination. Could that be also the reason why the Exim Bank recently has announced? I think you can fill me up on that. Sure, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Um, I was there. Uh, they inaugurated their uh, regional office in Nairobi, uh, a process that was fully supported by the government of Kenya. And that's precisely the reason, because they recognized. So has it fully moved from Addis Ababa? Yes, it's phasing out from Addis Ababa yeah. and it's, uh, it's fully functional now in Nairobi. So the managing director of the Exim Bank based in Mumbai travels for that, as did the senior most official looking at the banking sector in India. And what they, what they recognize yeah. is that they can't have an Africa strategy without a presence in Kenya. And so their board decided that they need to be in Kenya. Uh, and if I recall correctly, they're looking at 12 countries from Kenya. Yeah. Uh, and I expect that that will also support a private sector activity, Indian private sector activity uh, and business activity in Kenya. Because I heard the managing director and she's uh, full of ideas in terms of how this can be taken forward. Yeah. And I want to switch you away from, you know, uh, that relationship and take you back to India and Kenya. In terms of medical tourism, mm. I'm sure from where you sit at, you're aware. Yes. You know, lots of visas, lots of medical tourism visas yes. from Kenya to India. And this is, you know, partly because India is, uh, you know, affordable compared to Kenya in terms of cancer treatment and all of those kind of illnesses. What do you have to say about that and what can we learn from that? Well, we welcome medical uh, travel from Kenya to India from and as you said it's because we're affordable but it's also because we uh, are have the quality so we are uh, and that is really for me that's the value addition that India offers uh, in probably any sector but it comes out most in healthcare uh, as far as Kenyans are concerned and Kenyan households are concerned because we pa provide pardon me I was about to ask did you study medicine by any chance <laughs> No, I, I, the only medicine I know is paracetamol. I'm not good with my meds. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, proceed, by God's grace. Yeah. So, so I think that, um, uh, but I'm a user of Indian medical care myself. Yeah. So I can tell you, and I'm a user of medical care across the world. And I can tell you, uh, we are right up there in terms of the quality of medical care, as well as the advances we've made. And that's why a lot of uh, medical value travelers use India uh, in addition to its competitive costing, as you just mentioned. And we're happy to have Kenyans come across to India for medical value travel um, to, uh, to sort of uh, see that for themselves. Of course, uh, we always hope uh, that you don't actually have to use <laughs> the medical profession as far as possible. Yeah. But when you do, I mean, and when it comes to that, then of course India is, is, is certainly a viable option and we recognize that and we're happy to facilitate that process. So Kenya and India are part of, you know, different uh, corporations. I would like to know in what form and way can these two countries also, you know, partner and cooperate on global issues such mm. as climate change? Correct. Because as you are aware, just the other day, we we're having lots of floods mm. and uh, we have lots of drought, you know. So drought and floods are, you know, quite, you know, common disasters ex experienced in Kenya, you know, as of the recent, you know, month. And I would like to know, are we having any, you know, collaborations, partnerships, you know, in terms of, you know, these global issues? You know, um, I think that uh, when it comes to global issues, yeah. Kenya and India have a lot of uh, similarities in perspective. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in also the challenges we face. We're both developing countries, the countries of the South, the kind of issues we face are similar and the kind of solutions or the kind of navigation of those issues is also similar. Yeah. We also have similar polities, we're democracies, we have a vibrant uh, sort of discourse around these issues. So uh, it's also similar in terms of the kind of our own internal sort of processes around that. 
And uh, we hear Kenya loud and clear on climate change, uh, on other international issues, yeah. uh, on, on, on debt relief or debt issues that face developing countries, yeah. um, on, on um, you know, uh, peace and security. And we really, really value Kenya's voice on those issues. Yeah. And if you look at India, uh, uh, you know, our prime minister has spoken very, very strongly about the same issues, climate change, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. on uh, uh, indebtedness of developing countries, um, on terrorism, peace and security. Um, we're a victim of terrorism. Kenya has also been uh, a victim of terrorism, including cross-border terrorism. So. There is so much similarity in terms of the challenges and also in terms of the navigation of the solutions around it. And so we see that the partnership on those issues, because of our similarity in perspectives, um, is, is something that we uh, value and we want to build upon. And these are certainly part of the conversations we have uh, with the government of Kenya and also part of the cooperation we have uh, with the government of Kenya. And uh, I think, uh, as you rightly pointed out, these are the kind of issues that we will uh, work on more closely, including in our common space of the Indian Ocean. We see maritime uh, sort of cooperation uh, with Kenya, which yeah. is, uh, you know, on the ocean as we are with the Indian Ocean and the kind of issues we face on it, face from it. Uh, we see, again, a lot of scope for us to work together. We're all both members of the IORA, the Indian Ocean Rim Association. Uh, and uh, India will take over the presidency of the IORA next year. So uh, we would certainly like to work closely with Kenya on, on that. On Thank that you aspect. so much for the aid that you provided just the other day to the flood victim. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to know when such an aid comes in, because it was an aid of about 40 tons. Yes. Yeah. When it comes in, what is the procedure, you know, from where you sit at? First of all, yeah. we uh, respond to uh, a request, in this case from the government of Kenya. And yeah. generally we do respond to requests from the government uh, in, in the place, the so government of Kenya. And uh, at our hand, we mobilize the aid as per the demands uh, or the requests of the government of Kenya and the stakeholders in the government of Kenya. And we deliver it. Our delivery is to the government of Kenya uh, in, in this case. And the government of Kenya then does the onward uh, sort of distribution, distribution. Of, of, the, of the aid that, uh, or of the uh, humanitarian assistance that was supplied. In so, so besides the aid, is there any expectation from your end? Uh, our expectation is that the aid will help yeah. in the flood relief measures and that's why we have delivered the aid in the flood relief measures of the government of Kenya. Uh, uh, and we recognize a gap or we recognize an urgency of that mobilization and therefore we extend it to, to the government of Kenya. Great. I'm sure uh, I'm aware we spoke about the scholarship opportunities and I'm happy that you highlighted that there is some. Is there any other opportunity available for Kenyans living in Kenya in India? Yes, we also have um, we have uh, short-term training opportunities Great. for Kenyans uh, in mostly in the public sector, but also in the private sector. Yeah. Which uh, is uh, we have about, if I recall correctly, about 300 training slots under that. Yeah. And there are Kenyans uh, from across Kenya actually availing of those courses, and uh, they touch upon every single uh, activity that is linked to development or governance. So we have people going for, let's say, forensic sciences. We have people going for women's uh, empowerment yeah. courses. We have people going for gender budgeting. We have people going for uh, blue economy, fisheries, um, cybersecurity, yeah. um, business administration, good governance practices, climate change related courses. So the whole length and breadth of uh, the kind of expertise or training you would require uh, in the area of governance and uh, development broadly is offered through this window. And Kenyans can avail of that um, uh, or about 300 slots every year. About 300 slots every year. When you're not being a diplomat, what is it that you're doing? How do you spend your free time? Because I don't have as much free time as, as I would like. It's correct, yes. Um, I try to spend it as much as I can with my children uh, and my family. Um, I have children who are growing and yes. they grow so fast. Uh, 
uh, that, uh, you know, in the blink of an eye... Uh, they are adults. They are adults. Yeah. My daughter is taller than me now. Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> and, and there was a time when I, could, I can still remember when she was, you know, cradled in my, in my lap. So I, I try to spend it with my children um, and, and sort of just get that quality family time going. Any favorite Kenyan dish? You know, I love the sukuma. Mm. Do you have it in yes. your garden? Yes. You do? Yes. You're going to show me. <laughs> you can take a bunch. <laughs> Many thanks for your time. Miss High Commissioner, I really appreciate that you created time. I know you're busy. You have been busy. And remember, we had this conversation a yeah. long time ago, yeah. remember? Yes. We were just trying to plan on when yes. you know, yes. we can create. Yes. So many thanks for making no, the time. No, it's been a wonderful to chat. And thank you for having me on your show. Um, and, and I look forward to discovering Kakamega soon. Yes, yes, Getting there. please. Yes. Discover all the counties you I know, do, across I do. You know, yes, the country. Yes. We have a beautiful you know, country and I not do. bragging but beautiful weather too. True, yeah. true. You, like I said, God's own country. God's own country. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Pleasure. Asante. Asante, son. I hope you caught all the opportunities in India and upcoming events highlighted by Madam Commissioner, along with a glimpse into her private life. Many thanks for keeping me company today. Make sure you join me again next Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Kenyan time only on KTN News. And if you have a story you'd like to share with us, don't hesitate. Write to us through globetraction at standardmedia.co.ke or DM us on our social media platforms at globetraction. You can also follow me on my social media platforms at Pasil Teleo on Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok and YouTube for more behind the scenes. But until then, see you next time, same time, same place. Bye bye for now.